recording is by Jim Ruddy. Summa Theologica, Pars Prima, Initial Questions, by St. Thomas Aquinas, translated by the Fathers of the English Dominican Province. Question 10. The Eternity of God. We must now consider the eternity of God, concerning which arise six points of inquiry. What is eternity? Whether God is eternal? Whether to be eternal belongs to God alone? Whether eternity differs from time? The difference of eternity and of time? And whether there is only one eternity as there is one time and one eternity? First article whether this is a good definition of eternity, the simultaneously whole and perfect possession of interminable life. Objection 1. It seems that the definition of eternity given by Boethius is not a good one. Eternity is the simultaneously whole and perfect possession of interminable life. For the word interminable is a negative one. But negation only belongs to what is defective, and this does not belong to eternity. Therefore, in the definition of eternity, the word interminable ought not to be found. Objection 2. Further, eternity signifies a kind of duration, but duration regards existence rather than life. Therefore, the word life ought not to come into the definition of eternity, but rather the word existence. Objection 3. Further, a whole is what has parts. But this is alien to eternity, which is simple. Therefore, it is improperly said to be whole. Objection 4. Many days cannot occur together, nor can many times exist all at once. But in eternity, days and times are in the plural, for it is said, His going forth is from the beginning, from the days of eternity. And also it is said, according to the revelation of the mystery hidden from eternity. Therefore, eternity is not omnisimultaneous. Objection 5. Further, the whole and the perfect are the same thing. Supposing, therefore, that it is whole, it is superfluously described as perfect. And objection 6. Further, duration does not imply possession, but eternity is a kind of duration. Therefore, eternity is not possession. I answer that as we attain to the knowledge of simple things by way of compound things, so we must reach to the knowledge of eternity by means of time, which is nothing but the numbering of movement by before and after. For since succession occurs in every movement and one part comes after another, the fact that we reckon before and after in movement makes us apprehend time, which is nothing else but the measure of before and after in movement. Now, in a thing bereft of movement, which is always the same, there is no before or after, as therefore the idea of time consists in the numbering of before and after in movement, so likewise in the apprehension of the uniformity of what is outside of movement consists the idea of eternity. Further, those things are said to be measured by time which have a beginning and an end in time, because in everything which is moved there is a beginning and there is an end. But as whatever is wholly immutable can have no succession, so it has no beginning and no end. Thus eternity is known from two sources. First, because what is eternal is interminable, that is, has no beginning nor end, that is, no term either way. Secondly, because eternity has no succession, being simultaneously whole. Reply to Objection 1. Simple things are usually defined by way of negation, as a point is that which has no parts. Yet this is not to be taken as if the negation belonged to their existence, but because our intellect, which first apprehends compound things, cannot attain to the knowledge of simple things except by removing the opposite. Reply to Objection 2. What is truly eternal is not only being, but also living and life extends to operation, which is not true of being. Now the protraction of duration seems to belong to operation rather than to being. Hence time is the numbering of movement. Reply to Objection 3. Eternity is called whole, not because it has parts, but because it is wanting in nothing. Reply to Objection 4. 
As God, although incorporeal, is named in Scripture metaphorically by corporeal names, so eternity, though simultaneously whole, is called by names implying time and succession. Reply to Objection 5. Two things are to be considered in time. Time itself, which is successive, and the now of time, which is imperfect. Hence the expression simultaneously whole is used to remove the idea of time, and the word perfect is used to exclude the now of time. Reply to Objection 6. Whatever is possessed is held firmly and quietly. Therefore, to designate the immutability and permanence of eternity, we use the word possession. Second article, whether God is eternal. Objection 1. It seems that God is not eternal, for nothing made can be predicated of God. For Boethius says that the now that flows away makes time. The now that stands still makes eternity. And Augustine says that God is the author of eternity. Therefore, God is not eternal. Objection 2. Further, what is before eternity and after eternity is not measured by eternity. But as Aristotle says, God is before eternity and he is after eternity. For it is written that the Lord shall reign for eternity and beyond. Therefore, to be eternal does not belong to God. Objection 3. Further, eternity is a kind of measure, but to be measured belongs not to God. Therefore, it does not belong to him to be eternal. And objection four. Further, in eternity there is no present, past, or future, since it is simultaneously whole, as was said in the preceding article. But words denoting present, past, and future time are applied to God in Scripture. Therefore, God is not eternal. On the contrary, Athanasius says in his creed, The Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, is eternal, and the Holy Ghost is eternal. I answer that. The idea of eternity follows immutability as the idea of time follows movement, as appears from the preceding article. Hence, as God is supremely immutable, it supremely belongs to him to be eternal. Nor is he eternal only, but he is his own eternity, whereas no other being is its own duration, as no other is its own being. Now God is his own uniform being, and hence as he is his own essence, so he is his own eternity. Reply to objection 1. The now that stands still is said to make eternity according to our apprehension, as the apprehension of time is caused in us by the fact that we apprehend the flow of of the now, so the apprehension of eternity is caused in us by our apprehending the now standing still. When Augustine says that God is the author of eternity, this is to be understood of participated eternity, for God communicates his eternity to some in the same way as he communicates his immutability. Reply to Objection 2. From this appears the answer to the second objection, for God is said to be before eternity, according as it is shared by immaterial substances. Hence also in the same book it is said that intelligence is equal to eternity. In the words of Exodus, the Lord shall reign for eternity and beyond. Eternity stands for age, as another rendering has it. Thus it is said that the Lord will reign beyond eternity, inasmuch as he endures beyond every age, that is, beyond every kind of duration. For age is nothing more than the period of each thing, as is said in the book De Celo. Or to reign beyond eternity can be taken to mean that if any other thing were conceived to exist forever, as the movement of the heavens according to some philosophers, then God would still reign beyond inasmuch as his reign is simultaneously whole. Reply to Objection 3. Eternity is nothing else but God himself. Hence God is not called eternal, as if he were in any way measured, but the idea of measurement is there taken according to the apprehension of our mind alone. Reply to Objection 4. 
words denoting different times are applied to God because His eternity includes all times, not as if He Himself were altered through present, past, and future. Third article, whether to be eternal belongs to God alone. Objection 1. It seems that it does not belong to God alone to be eternal, for it is written that those who instruct many to justice shall be as stars unto perpetual eternities. Now, if God alone were eternal, there could not be many eternities. Therefore, God alone is not the only eternal. Objection 2. Further, it is written, Depart, ye cursed, into eternal fire. Therefore, God is not the only eternal. Objection 3. Further, every necessary thing is eternal, but there are many necessary things, as, for instance, all principles of demonstration and all demonstrative propositions. Therefore, God is not the only eternal. On the contrary, Jerome says that God is the only one who has no beginning. Now, whatever has a beginning is not eternal. Therefore, God is the only one eternal. I answer that eternity, truly and properly so-called, is in God alone, because eternity follows on immutability, as appears from the first article. Accordingly, however, as some receive immutability from God in the way of never ceasing to exist, in that sense it is said of the earth, it standeth forever. Again, some things are called eternal in Scripture because of the length of their duration, although they are in nature corruptible. Thus, the hills are called eternal, and we read of the fruits of the eternal hills. Some, again, share more fully than others in the nature of eternity, inasmuch as they possess unchangeableness, either in being or, further still, in operation, like the angels and the blessed who enjoy the word, because as regards that vision of the word, no changing thoughts exist in the saints, as Augustine says. Hence those who see God are said to have eternal life. According to that text, this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God. Reply to objection 1. There are said to be many eternities, accordingly as many share in eternity by the contemplation of God. Reply to objection 2. The fire of hell is called eternal only because it never ends. Still, there is change in the pains of the lost, according to the words, to extreme heat they will pass from snowy waters. Hence, in hell, true eternity does not exist, but rather time, according to the text of the psalm, their time will be forever. Reply to objection 3. Necessary means a certain mode of truth. And truth, according to the philosopher, is in the mind. Therefore, in this sense, the true and necessary are eternal because they are in the eternal mind, which is the divine intellect alone. Hence, it does not follow that anything besides God is eternal. Fourth article, whether eternity differs from time. Objection 1. It seems that eternity does not differ from time, for two measures of duration cannot exist together unless one is part of the other. For instance, two days or two hours cannot be together. Nevertheless, we may say that a day or an hour are together, considering hour as part of a day. But eternity and time occur together, each of which imports a certain measure of duration. Since, therefore, eternity is not a part of time, for as much as eternity exceeds time and includes it, it seems that time is part of eternity and is not a different thing from eternity. Objection 2. Further, according to the philosopher, the now of time remains the same in the whole of time. But the nature of eternity seems to be that it is the same indivisible thing in the whole space of time. Therefore, eternity is the now of time, but the now of time is not substantially different from time. Therefore, eternity is not substantially different from time. Objection 3. Further, as the measure of the first movement is the measure of every movement, as said in the physics, it thus appears that the measure of the first being is that of every being. But eternity is the measure of the first being, that is, of the divine being. Therefore, eternity is the measure of every being. But the being of things corruptible is measured by time. Theref time, therefore, is either eternity or is a part of eternity. 
On the contrary, eternity is simultaneously whole. But time has a before and an after. Therefore, time and eternity are not the same thing. I answer that. It is manifest that time and eternity are not the same. Some have founded this difference on the fact that eternity has neither beginning nor an end, whereas time has a beginning and an end. This, however, makes a merely accidental and not an absolute difference, because granted that time always was and always will be, according to the idea of those who think the movement of the heavens goes on forever, there would yet remain a difference between eternity and time, as Boethius says, arising from the fact that eternity is simultaneously whole, which cannot be applied to time. For eternity is the measure of a permanent being, while time is a measure of movement. Supposing, however, that the aforesaid difference be considered on the part of the things measured, and not as regards the measures, then there is some reason for it, inasmuch as that alone is measured by time, which has a beginning and end in time. Hence, if the movement of the heavens lasted always, time would not be of its measure as regards the whole of its duration, since the infinite is not measurable. But it would be the measure of that part of its revolution which has beginning and end in time. Another reason for the same can be taken from these measures in themselves if we consider the end and the beginning as potentialities. Because granted also that time always goes on, Yet it is possible to note in time both the beginning and the end by considering its parts. Thus we speak of the beginning and the end of a day or of a year, which cannot be applied to eternity. Still these differences follow upon the essential and primary differences that eternity is simultaneously whole, but that time is not so. Reply to Objection 1. Such a reason would be valid one, if time and eternity were the same kind of measure, but this is seen not to be the case when we consider those things of which the respective measures are time and eternity. Reply to Objection 2. The now of time is the same as regards its subject in the whole course of time, but it differs in aspect. 